All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about egress gateway pattern. Um, raise your hand how many of you build integrations with at least one external APIs. Nice. How about two? How about three? How about 10? <laughs> nice, we really have a good representation of audience here. <clears throat> so why are we here today? We're here today because we live in a world of API integrations and everything is abstracted into APIs and APIs are indeed the biggest wave of software as a software source platform. And egress gateway from a client side point standpoint really helps to solve some of the biggest pain points from the client side of API integration. So before we jump into uh, the content, let me briefly introduce myself. Um, obviously I'm a cat lover. I'm a super big fan of open source. Um, I'm a creator of uh, Flagger and OpenMock. So if you Google them, these are some of the open source tools we created and used in our internal services. And of course, I'm a proud Kong contributor, although it's just like a few one-liner changes. I currently work at Checker and previously Uber. And here comes Checker. Um, we are a API company. We're also a data platform running background checks. We understand the background check industry, hiring industry, and we help our clients to make hiring more inclusive and more efficient. So you can also check out our public API document uh, to get a sense of what we are doing here. So today, we're going to cover three things. First, the advantage of egress gateway pattern. And second, we're going to talk about HTTP auditing for like the raw HTTP request and the response body. Uh, and then last but not least, we're going to talk about future egress gateway um, data usage. And we will have dedicated time at the end of the talk uh, to answer questions and feel free to step up to the microphone and ask questions at the end of the, this talk. Cool, so you may ask, huh, why and how to implement this egress gateway? Um, what if I say that we already have something that's pretty much production ready uh, for egress gateway? So from, from that solution, everything feels organized. They have plugin systems, modulized operations can be codified and logging observability are just natively supported and even some low-level retries are there for free. You may have, some, have a guess of the answer, so let's talk about it. So why egress gateway pattern? Before we talk about egress, let's record the definition of ingress and egress. Ingress is a very simple but super powerful idea that most of the companies are using it right now. For example, like api.stripe.com or api.checker.com, you're building this gateway to control what's flowing into your cluster. Uh, I believe most of us are familiar with this concept, especially the Kong community. Um, ingresses can be handled by a lot of API gateway solutions. Uh, of course, like Kong is one of them. Uh, you can also use Envoy to build ingresses uh, at Edge. You can use traffic, Istio, Linkerd, uh, or just a bare minimal Nginx. On the other hand, egress gateway pattern is that outbound requests are going through strict network policies that must through go through a gateway. And as a client, you are consuming this um, other other people's APIs. And an egress gateway pattern enforces like this network policy uh, for an outbound API request. So I want to highlight this is the fact. 
that number of APIs consumed equals the number of APIs served. It's, it's, it's pretty natural for us, for example, put as much energy as possible in building a good ingress gateway to serve our customers. We add logging to the ingress so that you know who you call the API from, your, from the server side. You add, for example, open tracing so that you know how APIs flow into your microservices and touch all the different parts uh, within your cluster. You add authentication, authorization, so that you, can, you are serving the right customers with the right permissions. And, and you add relenting to your ingress so that you block uh, excessive access from, to protect your internal services. However, think about it. Just as standing from your customer side instead of your, your, your internal like, service side, and due to the nature of symmetry, we should have about the same level of, of, of tension for outbound APIs just as what we have for inbound traffic. So normally, if we don't pay attention to outbound traffic, what could go wrong? I want to highlight Checker's story here. Um, what's special about Checker is that Checker integrates with all different systems to gather background track data. For example, we talk to county courts, federal courts, DMVs, national databases, international providers. And these integrations are in all various different forms. XML, they use XML, JSON, SOAP, synchronous HTTP calls, asynchronous webhooks. And you may even need to implement pooling uh, to periodically check data availability uh, for those providers. And to add on that, we'd like to have a complete visibility solution into this outbound APIs for debugging and compliance uh, reasons. I'm thinking, hmm, can we do something about this mass of egress control? So let's talk about some of the pain points that we saw uh, before we move to egress gateway. So here are five pain points uh, we learned from our experience. Logging standard, cross environment configuration, observability, security, and HTTP auditing. So let's go through them one by one. Take a look at logging standard first. Logging is hard. Logging consistently is even harder. So you want to log something about outbound traffic. For example, the status code, the retry count, some simple uh, 500, 400 hours that you got. How are you going to do that? Imagine you have, for example, six different program languages. Uh, in your, in your uh, engineering org. Imagine you, you're using two to three different HTTP clients in Java, three HTTP clients in Ruby, and let alone all different kinds of SDKs with different built-in HTTP clients because you are using their SDKs and you want to log outbound requests. So it's really hard to capture the logs and have, have, having logs in a standard way. The second pain point is crossing environment configuration. Um, it's pretty common that you're talking to API dot something in production, API dash sandbox something in staging, and local host something mock in integration environment or your local dev. Uh, of course, I mean, you can leverage environment variables to define different URLs for different environments. However, we're probably abusing environment variables um, and cross the line a little bit. Do you really think that the configuration of external API URLs should be tightly coupled 
to specific applications and specific environments. I mean, it's common to see applications with hundreds, even thousands of environment variables set during the deployment runtime. Um, the management of environment variables itself then becomes a new burden. What if, what if the configuration of egress gateway traffic lived happily within your centralized egress gateway? Um, the forwarding URLs, so-called upstream URLs, are defined as configuration, configurable environment variables within the egress itself and tied to the environment itself and abstracted away from applications. This is really why, for example, we have service discovery because you just need to know the name of the service. You don't need to know what exactly and where to find the service. I mean, we build service discovery for our, for our internal services. Why couldn't we just build another like service discovery for our external APIs in the same way? We're decentralized uh, egress gateway. The third pain point is observability. We may have built the same observability stack again and again and again for every single external APIs. Um, depending on your observability tool, uh, for example, Datadog Open Tracing uh, or Hostic Tracing Solutions, no matter what you're using, you're targeting a significant array of external domains and they may or may not follow the same uh, observability practice within hundreds of your internal microservices. Um, and, and to solve this, the egress gateway simpli simplifies the observability stack into just one domain and, and, and one gateway. For example, adding adding new APIs, uh, external API integrations may look may just look like adding a new routes or new endpoints. It's, it's much simpler, which is almost always supported um, in every observability solution. The first one is security. Um, if you want to limit the external domains that your application can talk to, you can whitelist them, I mean, one by one with your network policies. And, but, th but then there are definitely uh, a lot of maintenance costs for DevOps team uh, to set up kind of this enforcement of such restriction. And to solve this, this idea is really, really simple. Um, just reduce the service stack, uh, the, the, sur the surface of attack from N to one. So for example, Kong or uh, Istio Envoy, the native support this egress uh, network restriction policy where the definition of upstreams, which means outbound traffic can be whitelisted and your applications can only talk to outside the world where the egress gateway. Um, therefore, you reduce N APIs to one API gateway and you have much better control uh, in terms of security. Last but not the least, once you have standardized logs, observability, security, and centralized egress gateway, the pen point says sometimes um, simple and nginx access log of HTTP access uh, is sometimes it's not enough. Uh, I got like a lot of requirement from product engineer teams. They ask, what if I want to see the raw body of a request and a response? Um, what if I want to log the headers, even the most sensitive ones like authorization headers? And by doing so, how can I securely store the logs, I mean the raw request and response logs, with compliance and privacy regulation in mind? Do we really want to implement this um, again, again, again for every single application. So 
in the next section, let's see how Checker uses Kong and how Kong fits in the picture of solving these five pen points. Since we're already using Kong as an ingress gateway, we are wondering, hey, why not just use it as an egress gateway as well? Uh, I mean, natively, Kong solves logging standard by having all the traffic going through Kong. And it's very easy to enable a lot of uh, official logging uh, related plugins. And then they use exactly the same logging standard. Cross environment configuration. Um, right now, they support uh, beautifully like the DBLS mode. Configuration can be codified, and it's so easy to move from one environment to another environment. Observability, of course, can also be natively solved by plugins like Datadog or Prometheus. Um, security can also be solved by having just one whitelist domain, uh, and that serves as the egress DNS and all the external APIs will be listed as the upstream URLs inside that egress gateway column. Uh, one thing I do want to highlight here uh, is that for auditing the raw HTTP request and the response, we do need to build something um, in addition to what Kong offers. We will talk about that in the next section. So, this is like the architecture overview of what we have uh, at Tracker. Um, so it's actually recommended you deploy two instances or two clusters of uh, Kong. One is for ingress, the other one is for egress. And Kong just works. And you can deploy Kong like right now with ingress and egress, the symmetry. Kong actually, like a shell, protects your cluster in, in all directions. And and we and I'd really recommend that you have like uh, different deployments for ingress and ingress. If you're familiar with the definition of the previous deprecated APIs or upstreams in the latest like service and routes uh, concept in Kong, you can see how similar like ingress compared to egress. So ingress, you are just using internal services as the upstream URL. Uh, egress, on the other hand, you are using external APIs as the upstream URL. They are, by, by definition, native, natively supported in Kong. So here's an example of configuring ingress gateway in Kong. You can see you're, we're using kind of the latest DBLS YAML files, the demo here. And you can see the definition of two services with two routes. And one points to internal uh, users microservice, and the other one points to uh, internal payment service. So this is like very simple example of ingress uh, YAML configuration. On the other hand, egress examples almost identical uh, with upstream URLs pointing to external APIs. For example, one can point to uh, something like api.email.com. Imagine that email.com is like your email, sending email uh, vendors. Uh, the other ones like points to api.billing.com, like imagine some other API, external APIs handles your invoices or not. So you can just send outbound API request to the egress gateway DNS, like egress.service.cluster.local, if you're familiar with Kubernetes DNS, uh, instead of the actual api.email.com. Uh, you can see how simple the concept is with egress gateway configured. After doing that, after doing that, you, you realize a very nice thing that you can now treat your internal services as Kong consumers, just like normal external consumers. And let's dive into some detailed examples here. A lot of familiar plugins 
originally designed for external consumers just work for your internal services. For example, you can use all sort of authentication related plugins to control which internal sources can talk to external APIs. You can use ACLs to even implement a simple authorization uh, framework for your internal sources. You can enable Datadog or Prometheus for kind of like instant observability into your internal service outbound traffic. You can enable correlation ID uh, into the headers, uh, adding more information for you to tracing the logging uh, to the edge of outbound traffic. You can also do request or response transformation for some of the common logic that are going through the egress gateway. You know, the, the, the first time I discovered this, I, I, I felt mind blow. It, it opens a new world to me because all the familiar plugins that are applying to external consumers and now they are all, all of a sudden at my fingertip for internal services consumers. Uh, I really love this rich plugin system that gives me so much convenience by doing so. So to recap, from the experience of using Kong as egress gateway, we quickly learned that Kong solved, for example, the first four pen points. Uh, and then we are going to cover the pen points of doing HTTP auditing, i.e. getting or inspecting the raw HTTP request and response body. So let's talk about that, HTTP auditing. If you remember what we have discussed uh, about Checker, we are exhausting all possible data sources to reach the maximum accuracy uh, of background checks as we can. And the problem we're facing is auditing the rawest form uh, of outgoing HTTP request and response so that we can debug or, or comply with regulations. Uh, and, and, and store the raw logs uh, in a secure and efficient manner. And we don't want to implement this like HTTP auditing logic for every single application. Uh, this is where Kong e egress gateway steps in. So again, here's the uh, architecture of what it looks like. We extended a open source uh, HTTP log extended plugin. We sanitize um, we we'll also, also serialize HTTP request and response into Lua object. And then we choose to send it into uh, an internal service that can handle uh, HTTP logging request. Basically handle post request uh, with payload of the raw body. And then we call it HTTP logger service. At the same time, we also leverage correlation ID plugin. So the correlation, correlation ID can correlate what we store in HTTP logger in our business models. If I have time, I'd really like to dive into what like HTTP logger is. And, uh, and then it's a soon to be open source uh, source that can handle HTTP raw HTTP body logs. And then you can see some of the performance stats here. Uh, the whole HTTP auditing stack is designed to handle and securely store raw HTTP body logs from COM. It was, it was really low latency, like um, less than the, the P50 is less than one milliseconds because it stored the logs uh, asynchronously and it doesn't add much overhead to the egress gateway. So if you have performance concerns uh, or considerations of egress gateway, please chat with me offline. So going forward, we have egress gateway. How do we use it? I can think of now we have a lot of egress data. We can um, leverage that egress gateway data uh, in our non-production environment. So here are some ideas that we are actively working on uh, at Checker. 
I'm going to throw some ideas that we are thinking of extending the egress gateway. If we step back and look at why we're building uh, external API integrations, because um, I mean, we're, we're willing to pay a lot of money for those uh, external API integrations because they are one of the critical path uh, in our applications. They have values, of course, and they provide us with external information and data. And data, that's the key. Real data in production uh, is really, I mean, we don't, we don't want like real data, real PI, personal identifiable data in non-production environment. However, real data, I mean, it's usually a luxury uh, to have in non-production environment. On the other hand, they, they can be right, very costly and we're facing privacy and PI concerns in non-production environment. So with, with egress, we talk about HP auditing, we log a lot of data and standardize the outbound APIs. Real data from production that going through a egress gateway can be redacted into useful data in non-production environment. And we can now enable a lot of like very nice features like mocking the data, generate uh, mocking the data generator, and do a lot of things like backtesting. So mocking generator for our integration test or for our unit test for staging new environment is really uh, critical to us. Uh, here's a shameless plug for another open source project that we built. Uh, a tracker called OpenMock. Uh, it's a very flexible microsource behavior marking framework uh, that supports not only HTTP, but also Kafka and AMQP like RabbitMQ. And we are actively using it in our integration environment and staging environment. Uh, and of course, uh, I just learned uh, MockBank this morning from Kong's key keynote speaker. That's also really great. Uh, and back to and back testing uh, with the redacted data, like we re remove uh, some of the real PIs with some fake generated PIs in our in our uh, staging environment. You can now replay like these egress auditing logs and egress requests and test your new business logic or your new machine learning algorithms. So this is like really powerful tools given the data from egress gateway. And you can name more and more use cases of egress gateway. Uh, I think we're going to quickly summarize what we discussed today. Um, egress gateway solves some of the pain points in the integration of external APIs. Um, from our experience, it really works well in solving these five pain points. I don't want to call out some limitations and restrictions in the process of building uh, the egress gateway at Tracker. I'd like to have, for example, I'd really like to have better mutual TLS uh, as client certificate at a time because a lot of providers or external APIs, um, they, may, they may require some mutual TLS client certificates. And I, I, I'd also really like to have better DBLess support when we kind of like building this uh, egress gateway configurations. And the good news is the latest version, uh, the latest release 1.3, um, is a very exciting one. It has much better support for what we are expecting here. So if egress gateway pattern makes sense to you, you can record the, uh, the, the equation here. Um, number of API consumed equals to the number of API served. They are equally important to a healthy engineering organization. Um, and it's, it's really the beauty of symmetry here. A lot of reasoning about building APIs ingress gateway also can also apply to building egress gateway. Do not repeat yourself in consolidating um, the repeatable common uh, modules into just one gateway. If you have a service mesh, for example, or if you are already leveraging some API gateway solutions, 
Um, egress gateway pattern is really a low hanging fruit for you and you can iteratively adopt it. And I, I really like to highlight that how Kong gets tracker here. I want to close on a quote from William Golden. The greatest ideas are the simplest. We have simple and great ideas of reverse proxy, ingress gateway. We can also have the same simple and implementation for our egress gateway traffic. Thanks, guys. Um, at the end, we're hiring senior engineer for API platform team uh, in SF and Denver. Uh, we just closed a new funding round. Uh, Try with me offline if you're interested. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, please. Can I ask from here, sir? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. So keys and all security related things are still uh, within the application. So for example, let's say service A uh, needs to talk to external API A, uh, and then the keys and password to talk to API A will st still manage by service A, not the proxy, not the egress gateway. So egress gateway is like a transparent uh, uh, egress gateway that didn't need to handle uh, those kind of application secret because not not everyone needs to uh, leverage that uh, secret uh, with as application A. But but that being said, uh, I do see some um, points that maybe you can move also let egress gateway to manage the secrets for you. Uh, but we didn't go with to that direction yet. Cool, awesome. Thank you guys.